Now we'll look at how modulation is configured in Native Instruments Massive. When first talking about modulation, we'll find that there's one really important modulation that's already configured for us, even when we go to File and New Sound. In fact, there are two very important modulations already configured for us. The first one is keyboard tracking. As I play up and down the keyboard, the pitch of the oscillator changes. Let's hear. Right? We hear that I play, the key, I play up and down the keyboard, the pitch of the oscillator is changing. That is configured in the KTROSC section, which stands for Key Tracking Oscillator. We, what we have is a control signal coming from the keyboard going to the pitch of oscillator 1. And we can set that up in three different ways. The first one is linear, which means as I play up and down the keyboard, the pitch of the oscillator changes the way we'd expect. Middle C plays a C, D plays a D. If I was to set the oscillator 1 to off, we're actually disabling the keyboard tracking. We're no longer sending the signal from the keyboard to the oscillator 1. What happens if I play there? No matter what key I play, I get the same exact pitch. I've turned off that kind of modulation. And then we have the final one, which is user. And we said in, uh, with modulation, you'll always have to define an amount and a direction. Well, this is how I can define that amount and direction. If I reduce here, what I'm saying, or I, and I can bring this one up here, we're setting a very narrow range. I'm basically scaling the signal that's coming from the keyboard. So if this is all the way to the top and bottom, I'm saying that the output of the signal, the keyboard, is being sent directly to the oscillator pitch input. But if I reduce this range, I'm scaling down that signal. So as I play, we get all these nice microtonal sounds. Could be kind of interesting, very dense and um, out of tune sounding. It gets good tension. I could also change the direction. So we see with this, I'm actually controlling the amount and direction. Now, if I was to play up and down the keyboard, the oscillators go to the opposite direction. Let's see, I'll play up the keyboard. Very strange as I play up, the pitch goes down. So we see with this, I'm actually scaling that control signal. I'll set it back to linear, so that way we do hear typical pitches as we play up and down the keyboard. So that is one really important modulation. There is another important modulation already configured for us, and that is L envelope 4 controlling the amplitude of, of the main output of the synthesizer. We see that all these blocks here in Massive are our modulation sources, and all the Boxes under all these knobs are possible modulation destinations. We said there were three main destinations for us. We said it was oscillator pitch, filter cutoff, and amplitude. Well, that's this is going to be my oscillator pitch destination. This will be my filter cutoff one destination. And right here is my amplifier destination. And we can see by default, envelope four is already configured to control the amplitude. That's very common that the final envelope will control amplitude. In most synthesizers, the last envelope, the one all the way on the right, will be your main amplitude envelope. And we can see if I wanted to make a percussive sound, I could adjust this envelope shape. I could reduce the level of the envelope, I could reduce the attack, I could reduce the decay, and now I'll get a short blippy sound as we play up and down the keyboard. Kind of a nice percussive sound. If I increase the decay level, we'll get a sustaining sound. So we see that this um, envelope is a little more complicated than the typical ADSR envelope, but I actually like how this works better, because it really does represent that kind of Cartesian coordinate idea. This diagram is showing us time horizontally and amplitude vertically. As I adjust these knobs, I'm adjusting a breakpoint, right? Really, I'm changing this point. We have the x-axis is my attack, remember attack uh, time is horizontal on here, and the level is the point where that reaches, and that's going to be my level parameter right here. So basically we're describing our Cartesian coordinate, an xy coordinate for the sound to interpolate between. If I'm to think of a typical ADSR envelope, this is the typical attack time, this is the typical decay time. This would be what I would typically call sustain level, but we call it decay level here. And then we have our release time, and that part of the phase starts when we, when we release our key. We'll talk more about the envelope and configuring it in a, in a later video. Right now I'd like to say, how would I configure another type of modulation? And we said another really important one was vibrato, which is an LFO controlling the pitch of my oscillator. If I wanted to configure that, I would go to this modulation source, LFO5. And I'm using the first LFO because, remember, the oscillator is at the beginning of the signal path. So it makes sense to use your first oscillator 
at the beginning of the signal path. If I wanted to control volume with an oscillator, I might use one of the later ones, because amplitude is at the end of our signal path. It's nice to have your modulators lining up the same way the signal path works in the synthesizer. LO405 here, I'm going to assign it as my modulation source, and I do that by clicking on the crosshair. I click once and we see we have this 5 hovering along with the mouse. I've told Massive this is my modulation source. Any one of these boxes throughout the interface can be my modulation destination. And I want to control the oscillator pitch, so I'll come over to that modulation destination and click once. I've now defined a wire. It's like a signal path between the oscillator output and between the low frequency oscillator output and the oscillator pitch input. Now we said every time we set up modulation, we need to have a source, a destination, an amplitude, and a direction. So we assign the amplitude and direction by clicking and dragging up or down on that modulation slot. If I click on that 5 and drag up, I'm defining a positive modulation. And if I click and drag down till it's negative, I'm defining a negative direction. Now we'll also see a green and gray line appear above the parameter itself. The green side is the direction it's going as the modulator goes up, and the gray side is the direction it's going as the modulator goes down. If I go to a negative direction, we'll see that the green is on the negative side, so when the oscillator goes up, the oscillator pitch here will actually go down. So that's how we would configure modulation in Massive. Obviously, there's much more to it. We'll have to dig deep into the LFO parameters and the envelope parameters, but just assigning modulation, that's how we do it. Remember, every time you assign modulation, you need a source, click here. You need a destination, you drop it on a mod slot. You need an amount and a direction, and you assign that by clicking and dragging up or down.